G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday here in Australia, so we're waiting for Monday uh, in the States to see what happens to the market. And look, Bitcoin has done what I think it would, the Sunday traditional sell-off. I mean, it's not always on a Sunday, but it's over a weekend and, you know, of late it's generally been coming up a Sunday. It's probably the worst day for Bitcoin of every single week and we're now under 57,000. So again, we're up around 60. So we've lost uh, quite a bit and over seven days we can see it's just quite choppy. And again, it's a bit of a mixed bag by the looks of it at the moment. There's red and there's a little bit of green there. Market cap though, right down around that, you know, very low 1.8 trillion. We were getting up around sort of 1.8, I think 8 trillion, 1.87 trillion. So, you know, we we're just trying to break that $2 trillion market cap, but we're just not having a lot of success at the moment. And I do think this will play out for a little while longer. I just think we're, we're on a pause and this could be a prolonged pause. We might even go down a little bit. I don't see us going down too much uh, in all fairness. There is still institutions out there and they're buying the dip. They're just not, they're buying good dips. They're not just buying any old little dip. But also retail are still buying it. So people like you and me, I haven't bought Bitcoin for a little while now. But if it just keeps kind of ranging at this price, that is going to bring some confidence to me thinking that we're now actually forming a base, that this is going to be a solid base and that we're probably not going to drop under it. And we'll have a look at the Bitcoin chart very, very shortly. All right, BTC dominance. All right, so dropping there a little bit, 58%. It was six, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, it was around 60, then 59, down to 58. Uh, Ethereum dominance dropping a little bit as well. It's been 11.4 and higher, so now it's 11.3, and gas around 126. All right, let's have a look. What's really pumped, or has anything pumped, for that matter, in the last 24 hours? I'm going to say something probably has. There usually is in a bull market. There we go, Harmony, boom, nice. Helium, BitTorrent, still going. Ocean Protocol, Theta Network, Reserve Rights token. So there is a number of tokens that have been going up. Pundi X, still rising. Engine Coin has had a little bit of a rise, but over the seven weeks, it's really just kind of petered off and made, maybe that means it's getting ready for another leg up. All right, so great gains, anything over 15%. Really, there's only one that's had... I suppose you can call that one. That's still 15%. It's just over. So these two are really good gains. That's a great gain. That's a good gain in 24 hours. And the rest of these are still pretty good. Like no one's complaining if you get a, you know, 9 or 10% uh, rise in the price of whatever you're invested in in 24 hours. But we can see in the seven days, there's still some coins that are doing pretty well as well. Let's have a look at the seven days. What's pumped the most? So Harmony has been one, BitTorrent, PundiX. So we can see there's a number of coins here that over seven days have done pretty well. All right, so we go back to 24 hours. What's lost? Not much. So IST, IOST, sorry, down, you know, 9%, Avalanche, 7%. So a couple of, you know, one great gainer, one good gainer, uh, and a couple, a couple of other just, you know, reasonable gainers but very little losses in the last 24 hours which is interesting when we went back to the main screen because it looked like there was a fair bit of red there as we can see there's all this red all over the place but the 24 hour losses really not that bad the worst in the top 100 lost about nine percent and then there's just single digit losses and generally if you go over to the right hand side you can see they've still had gains over the last seven days some of them haven't so nears down uh, flows down and Huobi tokens down but look these losses aren't too bad and I'm going to say if you went back maybe 14 days ago on some of these coins that are down over seven days they probably pumped quite substantially so again it's pretty sideways kind of trending market and you can see just by looking at all the charts over here I mean IOST not so much did well but a lot of this is just kind of sideways there's nothing kind of too crazy high except for IOST had a really good gain it's just a choppy market going sideways all right let's start with Bitcoin today you're going to do something a bit different I've only got one or two stories to look at and then we're just going to look at some charts so here's Bitcoin now you can see it's been, because we could even use this, it's been kind of chopping around for quite some time. So we really have had a lot of sideways movement since around sort of February. And I mean, look, 
really you could even say from maybe back here in January all of this year so far has been a bit choppy it hasn't sort of been anything crazy high or crazy low I mean don't get me wrong going from what was this 42,000 down to 29,000 that's a pretty big drop but then it regained all of that and again then you've gone from 42,000 basically up to sort of nearly 60,000 but it's all just kind of chopping sideways there's no there's nothing parabolic I mean if we had a number of these in a row that would be considered parabolic we haven't had that and that's what makes me believe that is that this isn't the blow off top this is literally just you know kind of normal action really it's a little bit like a set of steps goes up sort of sideways goes up sideways although it comes down a little bit in these but that's basically just a regular market again up sideways up sideways a bit of a dip there and then it goes up sideways then it goes up sideways up sideways and that's where we are now I drew this chart the other day and I said I did expect Bitcoin to just chop around it in here and it's chopping around perfectly there but I do suspect in the next kind of you know roughly by the 27th of March so we've only got another five days we will have broken out of this I do expect us to break out to the upside but now that I've said that the world and the universe will probably <laughs> conspire and say we're going to show that you don't know what you're talking about and break downwards it is a possibility but look I think we're going to break out to the upside and then it's going to be another move like this it doesn't just go straight up there'll be you know days where it goes up and days where it goes down I don't know if we'll have anything like this we could but I think it's just going to be more of the same and I think it's just going to continue to do this you know for many more months and again once we start getting well once we break above the hundred thousand I think we're going to get close to it so let's say ninety seven thousand I think we have a steep correction maybe down to the sixty fifty thousand dollar level it'll be a 30 40 percent drop and then we sort of chop sideways for a little while and once we get back to a hundred and we break over 100 and then we start to use one hundred thousand dollars as support I think that's when we're going to see the parabolic moves people are going to want to see Bitcoin break above one hundred thousand come back down and retest 100,000 maybe even a couple of times two or three times thereabout and once people see that all right Bitcoin can actually hold 100,000 and it's not the end that is when you're going to see real FOMO people are like oh my god it went from $3,800 last March you know March 2020 to a hundred thousand dollars and holding in 2021 this is going to go to you know whatever price that they think it might go to I really think that's when the true FOMO is going to start when Bitcoin can break 100 retest it at least a couple of times and then form a base on 100,000 that's when I see I think we're going to see the really big crazy stuff but I, I do think we have a steep significant pullback from Bitcoin as we approach that 100,000 look it could come at a 101,000 102 you know we kind of just wick up there or there's one daily candle that gets there but then I think we have a massive pullback and Bitcoin could definitely come back and retest like these 50,000 60,000 dollar levels I think that's when we're going to see the old traditional uh, Bitcoin pullbacks happening but there's no guarantees in life I'm not giving you financial advice that's just my personal opinion of what I think is going to happen Look, we're going to have a look at a couple of stories and then we're going to have a look at the charts on some coins that I'm really interested in. All right, number one, Pakistan. So, province to develop two hydroelectric Bitcoin mining farms. So, this is happening and it's moving to green energy. One of the big concerns is, you know, the amount of power that Bitcoin sucks up and, you know, the cost that that has on, you know, Mother Nature really. Well, if you're using green energy, then there is no cost. And I do think that this is the way that it's going to go. And it'd be interesting to see if it's the Pakistani government who's also behind this or whether it's just uh, private investors. Because at some stage, there's going to be a government somewhere around the world that is going to adopt Bitcoin. Oh, excuse me. And they're, yeah, it'll become part of their like you know structure of the way their country is developed and then it'll just be again that whole flow and effect no one wants to be the first so no country's jumping out there just yet saying yep we're making you know bitcoin the thing that we are uh, constantly you know put our capital into uh, until someone does it uh, 
and they do really well, like, you know, MicroStrategy or Tesla, and then someone else goes, all right, maybe I'll do this, and then all of a sudden they do really well, and then eventually everyone's doing it. And once the governments and things like that get in, that's when Bitcoin, I think, will really go to its, you know, highest prices, and that's when it will sort of stabilize as well. I don't think it'll have the, you know, huge volatile swings that it currently does now. That is my opinion of where I think Bitcoin going in the future. So we'll have to wait and see, you know, if this is a government initiated thing or if it's, you know, sometimes it's partial government uh, and, you know, partial private sector or whether this is just completely private sector. All right, next one. So Deutsche Bank, Bitcoin now third largest currency, too important to ignore. And this has been coming for a long time. So Deutsche Bank has published a report stating that Bitcoin is too important to ignore, noting that it is now the third largest currency in terms of the total value in circulation. In addition, the bank says that governments and central banks uh, know that cryptocurrencies are here to stay and are expected to start regulating the industry this year. They already are regulating it. And again, I hope they don't just over-regulate it and stifle it. I hope they just adapt to it. And again, don't try and make Bitcoin adapt to you. You would adapt to Bitcoin. That way we can really see what Bitcoin can do and, you know, see its full potential. Whereas if you try and make it adapt to you, you're going to restrict it. And yeah, that just won't be... Uh, Bitcoin will survive either way. Uh, and I, I think Bitcoin will eventually be the number one currency in the world. I don't see it ever being used as like a world currency where everyone you know, just uses Bitcoin. But I do think Bitcoin will be like the store of value at least. You, you'll, you'll be able to use Bitcoin all over the place. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they will eventually in 10, 20 years time have it so you can spend your Bitcoin anywhere, you know, your local groceries and things like that. But I'm just not sure people are gonna do that. That wouldn't happen until Bitcoin became basically super stable because otherwise, you know, you pay for something today with $2 worth of Bitcoin and six months later that's worth $500 worth of Bitcoin. That's, yeah, people just won't do it. They're simply going to hodl Bitcoin. Bitcoin won't be that kind of global currency until it, you know, completely levels out at whatever, you know, stage that is. And I just don't see it. I think other cryptocurrencies are going to be used for that. I do see Bitcoin as the, yeah, the global uh wealth sort of formula that's what it's going to be people are going to put their wealth into that that's their store of value that's what i see happening because it will continue to go up even when it stabilizes it's still going to go up it's just not going to have the massive fluctuations up and down again at least my personal opinion not financial advice all right i want to go have a look at a couple of charts all right this one is very very interesting is Chainlink massively 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 undervalued at the moment so I had this chart and this was done ages ago and uh, Chainlink had been following this uh, trend line for just such a long time. Again, this went all the way back to May 2019. It'd pump up, come down and retest. It'd pump up, come down and retest, pump up, retest, pump up, retest, pump up. And then we thought it was gonna retest here and this has finally been broken. Now it seems like this is the base for it. So what I'm watching for now, is this the base that we need to wait to see Chainlink get to? And again, this is against Bitcoin for it to come down and possibly retest this and bounce back up. Or is it this line that we have over here? Because this has been broken. This is now null and void for now. It's not to say that this can't pump back up and get up above here and then continue to follow this trend. Just at the moment, that's not. And so what we can do with this line as well, is we just keep this line going and we see an interesting pattern there. That it has come back and retested this line. So again, this is against Bitcoin, so it's not against the dollar. It's retested this a few times and now it's moving away. Is Chainlink possibly getting ready for another really, really, really big move to get, excuse me, up against this red trend line? Because again, this is anything under this is bearish against Bitcoin, not bearish against the dollar it's still performing reasonably well against the dollar it's just not performing as well against bitcoin so i'm waiting to see if this will now be you know a trigger point and again maybe this is the confirmation line right here or is it down here we just don't know yet this is looking pretty promising at the moment test 
Uh, very quick wick down test, fallen above, coming back up to test it again. Does chain link now go boom and make another move back up and then start to just continue to follow this um, trend line that it was following for many, many years. Uh, interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on chain link and I may have to start putting some money in <laughs> to chain link. I might start, yeah, dollar cost averaging back into it because at the moment, at least against Bitcoin, it just looks really undervalued. It's kind of been sleeping for a while against Bitcoin. So very, very interesting. All right, Matic. What we can see is there's a bit of a pattern with Matic here. And again, this is all, they're all against Bitcoin at the moment. So Matic pumped up and this is basically been this white line here has been the average mean price for quite some time. Now, it pumps up, comes down, breaks this mean, and kind of retests this uh, line here, breaks up, stayed under, broke up, came above, and it's just a repeating cycle at the moment. So for me, I'm looking at the price of Matic, and again, this is against BTC, the dollar value you know, is kind of separate. You can, I like to look at both because sometimes if something is outperforming Bitcoin, which Matic has for a while now, uh, um, my gains are way more from Matic than they are against Bitcoin. You can, you can, you may as well, if it's outperforming Bitcoin, why not compare it against the US dollar? But you know, there'll be people that would argue that and you need to make your own decisions. But I use both charts. But for today, I've based it on Bitcoin because it just, it's very interesting. Broke up above, went below, almost broke up above, it sort of did, it wicked out above, went below, and I'm talking about this white line, the medium line, broke up above, went back below, broke up above, went back below, broke up above, and now it is just broken back below again, and we can see these red trend lines here as well, it's usually bouncing fairly, well not fairly, it is, it's basically bouncing off these lines, not exact, I mean here we've had some that went under and again we've had some wicks that have gone under here but we can see it basically just forms a base and I do think Matic is now getting ready to make another big run. Again, not financial advice, I never provide you that, you've got to do your own research and these are on the daily charts so you can you know, go down into smaller time frames if you want. I like to look at a more kind of macro picture so you know daily weekly monthly and things like that I haven't looked at the weeklies or monthlies but just on the dailies I'm looking at this and it looks like Matic is probably going to get ready for another move up but again no guarantees in life all right but again Matic super bullish on it and all these coins that we're going to have a look at these are coins that uh, I really believe in and I am they're my biggest altcoin positions uh, and they have performed uh, the best as well. All right, let's go over here. Secret network token. So this is very interesting right here. This is basically, it's not a fork of Enigma, but it's related to the Enigma token. They had a lot of issues and basically you could swap your Enigma tokens one for one for secret network. And this is against Bitcoin. And we can see that this is basically where it is now. And this is kind of a, a median line, you can say. It was testing here fell down it's a bit of a uh, cup and saucer uh, sorry cup and handle type pattern that's going on and that's usually a very very bullish sign here it is it dips under comes back up and tests the top the handle goes up it comes back down retests this line and I get the feeling so if we go here this is basically how it works so we come down here come up Here's the handle, and usually this happens, and then you start to go like that. Well, sorry, get rid of that. Remove, just, we'll leave that there. All right, so basically, again, came down, that was the handle, came back down and tested. This to me is looking super bullish at the moment. And look, even this is almost like a little cup and saucer handle thing right here, but it didn't go up high enough and then come back down and test it. It came up, met it, and fell down. But on the bigger macro picture, not the micro picture, this has gone down, come up above, uh, hit its peak, and now it's come back down and it's retested the top of the cup. And with any luck, this will now start to do something like this. Could be wrong though, it doesn't always play out, but this is looking pretty good at the moment. 
Uh, Secret Network is definitely something I'm going to be continuing to put more money into, particularly when I see this uh, chart pattern. It's looking extremely bullish, in my opinion. All right, Aave. Now, it's done. It's yeah, been repeating this cycle uh, a number of times over. So here's kind of where there's been an average medium price. It pumps up. It gets in a downward channel. Gets close to this median line. Pumps up gets down to this uh, medium line very close and pumps up. Now, I don't think we're gonna come back down and meet here. I, th I think this line is basically going to be null and void from now. And this white line, I think, is going to basically be sitting up somewhere around about probably here now. So what we can do, I do think this is going to be something similar to this I think this is now just this reoccurring up slightly higher against Bitcoin so again breaks up comes on a downward spiral finally breaks out comes on a downward spiral finally breaks out and it is just simply gaining on Bitcoin and we can see that according to this if you follow this I mean you know you could change this you know to something like this if you wanted or again, you can do something like this because this is where it's got a bit of confluence. The wicks are hitting there. It, there's then testing this uh, underneath, broke out, fell below testing it, and now it's broken out. But either way, on the charts, I think this is looking pretty bullish. You know, how it's going to perform from here, I don't know. And is it going to have to do something where it kind of repeats this? So it only just gets out above this line, so maybe this gets out to about here, travels sideways, breaks down, before it then starts to make this next move back up. But either way, again, this is against Bitcoin, not the dollar. I think this is looking pretty good. It's broken out to the upside, and it has tested this a few times. Not to say it can't come down a little bit lower and test this before making its next move back up. But Aave, I'm a massive fan of Aave. I've got a good position in Aave. And the way these charts are looking, I'm thinking this is something I might have to uh, sort of dollar cost average into at the moment because it's looking bullish. All right, the graph. Another interesting chart. Again, we can see it, it had a bottom down here. Pumped up super high above it. Came back down to basically test it. And here was that uh, line. And it travelled sideways and slowly made its way back up. And this is also looking a little bit like a cup and handle uh, type formation again here's kind of the brim this is the brim of the cup around about sort of here it's the bottom of the cup comes up there's the handle and then the handle comes back down to retest kind of the brim you know again it's not exact thereabouts and you know again you can say it's sort of here go by the trend line and now it is just simply traveling sideways uh, along the tip of this cup and again, quite often this can be bullish and that means it's getting ready to make another big move up. Could be wrong. Charts are never guaranteed. They don't always tell you the full picture, but it is looking pretty good at the moment. Again, we've had kind of the blow off top and not the blow off top for the whole cycle, just this tiny little part. Again, blow off top, came down, found a base, was traveling sideways for a little bit here. Uh, made a little bit up, traveled sideways for a little while, came up, Traveled sideways for a little while, had another blow off top, and now it's come down. And again, traveled sideways here, dropped down a little bit more, traveling sideways here. Is it possible it travels sideways and drops off even more? Yep, it absolutely could come back down and test this. Maybe this here is the top of the cup again. Cup, handle, and then we finally come back and test this kind of cup. Possibly, absolutely. But if you're wrong and it's simply, you know, goes massive from here you don't want to wait until you know it gets to exactly here you just have to be thereabouts and again if you buy here and it does come back down and test here provided you haven't bet the house on it uh, and you can simply you know hold for long enough you have the diamond hands this kind of loss isn't going to kill you particularly if yep you buy here okay fair enough it drops down to here against bitcoin but then makes another move like this because that's what it's looking like at the moment. It literally looks like history is repeating itself. Blow off top. Comes down. Travels sideways. Slowly makes its way up. Another blow off top. 
travel sideways. It really does look like history is repeating itself. So for me, Ave, I'm looking at dollar cost averaging into Link. I'm looking at dollar cost averaging into Matic, SRT. These are all showing what I consider to be bullish chart patterns. Now that I've said that again, I could be wrong and it's not financial advice. Please never take what I say. All right, last but not least, Synthetics Network. So this one's a bit interesting. Again, it has something sort of similar play out. Okay. Travels down sideways for a while till it gets to its kind of mean price. And then, boom, has a big massive move up. And then it does, we can see here, it uses old resistance as support. It's done this before. And again, this was a big, uh, you know, cup and handle type thing. Look at that. Here's the brim of the cup. It goes down, finds its bottom, blow off top. comes down finds its bottom this is another cup and handle thing again it's just a pattern that just seems to be repeating over and over again comes down levels out boom blow off top this one is slightly different though came down leveled out almost came to you know do the cup and saucer thing hasn't quite worked and is starting to make its way down so what i'm looking for is really this kind of price against btc i'm waiting to see excuse me, if Synthetics is going to come down and test the 20,284 sat level, thereabouts, it doesn't have to be exact, really anywhere kind of around about sort of here. You know, technically it could be here, maybe it's down here, this is where the conflu uh, conflu confluence, sorry that's the word I was looking for, is, but there's no guarantee it comes down and touches exactly. But also what I'm looking for is does it break out of this line uh, and start to make its way up or... Is it going to do something like this? Breaks out above, still comes down and tests it a few times before it makes its next move up. So again, do we kind of break out and then sort of come down and test this a few times before then making the next move up? We have to wait and see. So for Synthetics Network, I'm not dollar cost averaging at the moment because these the chart pattern has changed. Again, it's repeated this pattern twice before, but it's not repeating it right now. So I am waiting to see where the bottom is for it. Does it come back down and retest this or is it just going to do something a little bit different? But basically, if it comes outside of this green line, it's now bullish against BTC. But it could be bullish for a second and then sort of still turn bearish. And again, so Bitcoin, what can happen is Bitcoin can be moving and Synthetics Network simply stays around kind of the $19 that it's worth at the moment. So that means it can travel down here. It's not losing dollar value. It's still staying stable at $19, but it's just Bitcoin's moving until it gets to touch somewhere down around here. And that's probably when Bitcoin will get on a pause and then the altcoins will start to run. I'm just not sure what uh, is happening with this pattern at the moment, but... If it breaks this line, I will be keeping an eye on it and then I'm waiting to see what it does. Really, I won't be chasing the pump. I will be chasing kind of the dump on Synthetics Network, not chasing the pump. I won't chase the pump on Synthetics Network until it breaks this. If it gets above this and basically comes up uh, to here, that's when I'll possibly, I won't be chasing it too heavily, but if it's gonna start breaking this, I will be putting some money into Synthetics Network here because I'll be thinking that that's a breakout and it's going to make its next leg higher. I could put it here, but if it rolls over, then I've just lost too much. So for me, if uh, Synthetics Network starts to come up, it's really got to break kind of this before I'm even going to look at it. But what I will be looking for if it continues to sort of, you know, do worse against Bitcoin is if it comes down and gets anywhere close to this line here, this is where I'll be looking to uh, get a good buy-in. Again, I'm sort of thinking that it's going to, do something like this. It's going to keep traveling down. I don't think we're going to break out of it. Could be wrong. I think we're going to keep traveling down. The dollar value is going to stay the same, but Bitcoin's probably going to go on a run. It's going to get somewhere down to around about here. Again, somewhere here. Here's some confluence. Or maybe actually touch here, or again, maybe even dip below. And that's where I'll be looking to buy into Synthetics Network at the moment. The other ones are definitely looking, looking a lot more bullish on the charts. Synthetics Network, I'm still super bullish on it. I'm just not sure where it is. It's not a buying opportunity at the moment. I'm just keeping an eye on the charts. All right, that's it from me. 
Sunday, the retracements come. The weekend retracement, it has been happening mostly on a Sunday for a while now. But, you know, it doesn't always happen on the Sunday. It can happen on the Friday, Saturday, and even late sort of Thursday night sometimes. And, look, there's dumps uh, in the middle of the week sometimes. But generally, the weekend theory plays out fairly consistently. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that game train, congratulations to you. It's pretty hard at the moment. But, look, I don't think we're at the end. And I'll see you next time.